I'm Mr. James at Charm City Karate. Uh, I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about something I'm going to call style fidelity. Uh, me and a couple of my friends were at a local MMA promotion uh, a couple of weeks ago. It was a pretty good piece. Uh, they've been doing it for, I don't know, a few years now, I think. Basically, what it seems like they do is the local BJJ gym, they call it an MMA gym, watching the striking, I'm not too sure they spent a lot of time on the striking, but whatever. They contact the other BJJ gyms, they get together, they put up a nice octagon looking thing, and they get all together, and they smack each other around pretty good. It's not bad for, you know, B-list stuff. So, we go, we're watching the event, it's pretty well run. They got some famous guys that show up. They got cute ring girls, all that stuff. What brings me to this though, and what makes me want to talk about style fidelity, is the mistakes I kept seeing over and over again in this event. Guys that should have had a quick win in their matches would have had a quick win if they were in the big leagues and need to get over what they're doing to make it into the big leagues. All right? Now, let me start off by saying I'm not a pro fighter. I never would be a pro fighter. That's not my game. Okay? It's not what I do. I admit that. That does not mean that I don't know the difference, that I I don't know what it would take. Okay? You got to know how to hit. You got to know how to grapple. You got to know how to submit. You got to know the fight game. All right? Back when all this started in 91, maybe you could get away with only knowing half a game. Maybe. You can't do that anymore. You got to have a complete game. You got to know how to submit a guy. You got to know how to wrestle. And you got to know how to hit. You got to know it all. Doesn't mean you have to be a master of all three phases, but you got to know it all. All right? So, here's the problem. What I kept seeing over and over and over again, there were no less than four fights where I saw the same mistake happen. And it cost these guys. At least one of these guys lost his fight because of this mistake. What happened was this you have a guy. They start on their feet. Keep this in mind. All you guys that love to grapple and all you BJJ haters that are going to send me emails and you're going to like put your little hate stuff in the comments section of this video, keep in mind as much as you love your BJJ, all the fights start on the feet. None of them start grappling. None of them start with you guys belly to belly on the ground. All the fights start on the feet. You got to start standing and get to the ground. Okay? So the fights start standing up. The guys throw a couple of shots back and forth. Okay? So fighter A tags fighter B. Fighter B is woozy. He staggers up against the cage. Fighter A runs over. Now, in the big leagues, in the pros, Okay? You're talking the UFC and, oh wait, the UFC bought everybody else. All right, Pride, Strike Force, the guys that used to be Big League 2 before Dana bought everybody. What happens? I'll tell you what happens. The pros run over, they see they got a stunned opponent, they throw a few more quick shots into him, maybe punches, maybe knees, maybe they kick him. The ref comes over, the ref waves, the fight is over. All right, because you got him stunned. You hit him, he can't defend himself. No, no, no. Because these guys are grapplers, they're submission artists, they do BJJ, they run over and they grab him. All right, now, that's because they have style fidelity. They want to stay true to their style. They are not strikers, they're grapplers. They're jujitsu guys. So what they want to do 
Now they got this guy, they want to finish their way. They want to finish with their style, okay? They want to get a submission. So they're going to try and submit this dude. All right. I'm going to give you guys a big hint here. Do you know what strikers are taught to do when they get stunned? I'll tell you. Strikers are taught to tie up. They are taught to grab their opponent and put their head somewhere where it doesn't get hit easy. Okay? If you can't tie up your opponent, you're taught to cover your head with both arms and get into a small ball so you don't get hit in the head too much. If you can get to your opponent, you grab him, you muckle onto him, and you bury your head into his chest so he can't hit you too much. Do you know what a lot of beginning submission attempts look like? You grab your opponent, you pull him into you. Oh, he's in a spot where you can't hit him too much. So these guys run over to where their opponent is stunned, they grab him, and oh look, his head's tucked into their chest. They're not hitting him. He's starting to recover. The ref comes over, there's no reason to stop the fight. They get him, maybe they throw him on the ground, most of the time they didn't. Maybe eventually they get him on the ground. A couple of them did. Now they're on the ground. Stunned guys starting to recover. They wrestle around a little bit. Things slow down on the ground. If you do jujitsu, you know that. Things slow down on the ground. Okay? So now they're on the ground. They're rolling around. The stunned guy's starting to recover. He's getting his wits back. Oh, now what should have been a finish two seconds ago is taking a long time. Something where if you'd run over and you'd pop the guy one more time or you'd thrown a kick into his face while he was up against the cage, the ref would have run over and stopped it. No, no, you had to get a jiu-jitsu finish. Now you're not getting your jiu-jitsu finish because you're on top of this guy and you're trying to get an arm bar and he feels you going for an arm bar and he's got time to pull his arm back in and you're wrestling around. He wraps his legs around you, wraps his arms around you because it's an easy thing to do. Okay, you're trained when you're stunned to grab a guy and hold on for dear life. So there's what he does. Now they're on the ground and they're holding on for dear life and they're down there for a long time. Guy makes it out of the round. Okay, fighter A had fighter B stunned. He had him against the cage. If he'd gone in and struck him a few more times, he'd have been done in the first round. But he had to stay true to his style. He went with style, fidelity, and he didn't get that first round finish. Most of them didn't get a second round finish. One of the guys ran over and got the guy in a guillotine choke. You know what? If the guy's stunned, he's not going to tap. He can't tap. He's stunned. Wow, imagine that. Okay, think of this. You ever heard the expression, a guy with a hammer sees a world full of nails? All right. Professional carpenters always use the right tool for the job. Same thing with professional mechanics. But I bet you know some guys, you might have even done this yourself, who while they're doing a carpentry job at home will look at, say, I don't know, a Phillips head screw and they got a regular flathead screwdriver and they don't feel like going all the way down to the basement to get their Phillips head screwdriver. So they try to fit that flathead screwdriver in there and they start jimmying it around and they... Yeah, you've done it, right? And you... Uh, uh, okay? I've even seen guys try to get like the tip of a saw in there because they didn't feel like going in to get their screwdriver, okay? Or they grab like a screw with a pair of pliers and they start trying to wrench it. Yeah, you know these guys, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm prying up nails with all kinds of tools that ain't meant to pry up nails because they're lazy or they're just trying to do everything with one tool. It's the same thing these BJJ guys are doing. Now, don't think that I'm just hammering on them. Style fidelity for any kind of a pro is a bad idea. It's a bad idea for amateurs too, okay? If you're trying to defend your life in a fight, and you're on the ground, and the only thing you can think of is to try and punch a dude, when what you should be trying to do is choke him out, that's pretty stupid too. All right? I've seen guys in these semi-pro fights get a dude's back, wrap their legs around him, and then start trying to punch him in the head 
to get a submission by punching. That's not going to work either. Okay, if you got a dude's back and you don't know how to do a rear naked choke, you should be embarrassed and hand in your fighting card because you don't deserve it. All right, you should know some basic stuff. You should know that when you've got a guy's back, you submit him. You don't start punching him in the back and the side and hope that he's going to give up. Okay, it's not going to happen. Style fidelity is a bad thing. Okay, there is an old quote that I can't remember who it's from that says, a warrior should have no favorite weapon. You know what they were talking about? Style fidelity. Yeah, if all you want to use is a katana, your enemy's going to figure that out and he's going to stand 100 yards away from you with a bow. And he's going to start twinking at you. And you'll be like, oh, crap, I can't fight him. Thunk, oh, oh, you're dead. Why? Because you wouldn't pick up a bow and he killed you. You've got to learn to use the right tool for the job. And I don't care what the right tool is, you've got to learn to use it. All right? It doesn't mean that it's your favorite tool. It doesn't mean that you can't try to get the guy to where you want him to be. All right? You like jujitsu? Take the guy down. But if you're fighting and your plan is to take him down and you pop him in the head and he goes, oh, then finish it with a punch, man. Don't think, all right, now I'm going to take him down. What? You got him stunned. Finish the fight. Go home early. Have a beer. Grab your girlfriend. Have a good time. Don't revert back to, yeah, yeah, now my plan is to take him down and get a leg lock. I've seen fighters so fixated on getting an ankle lock that they lost a fight. Every time they got the guy on the ground, they started going for an ankle lock. What? Don't think I got to win by ankle lock. That's silly. Okay, take what the guy gives you. Win however you can. Style fidelity is a trap. Okay, I run into the same thing when I go to do seminars. Guys will come up to me and be like, well, didn't Mr. Parker say this? You know what? Ed Parker might have said that about Kempo. But the other thing Ed Parker said was that Kempo's meant to be a living system. It's meant to adapt and change. Okay? I'm not going to say so locked into Kempo and what Ed Parker said that I'm going to ignore a good change or something that I think should happen to the system because I have to have style fidelity and stay in this little tiny channel. All right? That's dumb too. All right? You've got to learn to change. You've got to do what's right and what works. All right, so end of rant. I hope you guys learned something. Use the best tool for the job. I'm Mr. James at Charm City Karate. Have a good day.